We just saw a monster. He, he was a monster, I say. He was behind us, right at the water hole. We were getting out and we never saw him until he took off running. He was a monster. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Elite Hunter. This is episode four. It's going to be a very special Q and A uh, little episode here. Uh, we were on location this weekend filming a commercial for a high fence property, so we didn't have any hunts to film this weekend. So maybe Jeremy this weekend will give us some footage that we can really enjoy next week. So as y'all saw earlier this week on Facebook, we put a post out there asking for questions that we would sit and answer and see if we could try to help anybody. Uh, we had a, a few responses. It wasn't too bad. So we're going to go ahead and go straight to Facebook and we'll answer the questions for you. All right. You want to take the first one? Let's do it. All right. The first one will be from Wesley Robinson. And the question is, tell us about feeding, time, type, and quantity. All right. So here in West Texas, uh, we, we have feeders. So we, we, throw, we throw our feed. Uh, before season, you know, after, you know, spring, spring, summertime, I will do protein. I'll do a mixture of protein and corn, uh, just just to help with the antler growth, the body growth, the the, the overall growth of the deer. Uh, now, when we transition into the hunting period, about mid mid August, September, somewhere in there, they. You know the growth is pretty much done. Uh, antler growth is done. They're starting to rub all the velvet off. So I transitioned from protein straight into corn. Uh, now that being said, I throw early in the morning, about 15 minutes probably bef uh, after sunrise. Uh, I do about six seconds uh, because I've got the deer to, to eat it. Uh, I do another throw maybe an hour after that. The reason I do another throw is to catch different deer that are moving in. All your, all your younger deer uh, and, your, and your does, they're going to come in early. They're going to get there, you know, probably before daybreak and just wait on the feeder. Uh, my later feed is going to pull in more of the bigger bucks because they start to move later in the day. Uh, that's not the case all the time, but from my experience, it is the case. I, I just like that second throw for the bigger, mature animals. Later in the evening, I'll throw about an hour, hour and a half before sunset. Uh, the reason for it is, again, for the smaller deer, they're, they're waiting to eat. Uh, I'll throw again six seconds, uh, get enough corn out there that they're there for, you know, 15, 20 minutes depending on how many deer. Uh, and then I'll do another throw 30, 45 minutes later than that, about probably 30 minutes before shooting light's over. Uh, I do that because, that, again, that's when the mature deer are starting to move. Uh, they like to move right before dark. They feel a lot safer that way. And so I'm hoping to get, uh, you know, the bigger bucks to come in. Uh, now, I've got a place down by the river that has a lot of turkey. So in the morning, I will throw early, again, like, like I do up top, about 15 minutes after, after uh, daybreak uh, for the deer. The, the turkey are usually still cooped, cooped up. You know, they come down, and so I'll throw about 30 minutes after that, and usually I'll get a mixture of deer and turkey on that one, and then I'll do another throw about 30 minutes after that one. Uh, again, for mainly for turkey on the third one, but I do have some deer that hang around that long, uh, and that just keeps keeps the turkey there. And in the evenings, I'll do you know two two throws in the evening, just like I do up top. Yeah. So I don't have the luxury of doing a food plot. I don't. I can't afford it for one. I can't. We've got we've got cattle that they put on our place, so I, we would have to fence it off. And I, I just, I can't do that. Right. You know, or, you know, put some type of hot fence or whatever. And and you would have to build a big enough food plot that even the deer couldn't keep mowed down to the ground in order for it to work properly. 
So you'd have to figure out either a hot fence to keep the deer out. I've heard of people putting up two, two hot fence side by side, you know, about five feet apart to keep the deer out. But like I said, that's just, like I said, this is, this is a blue collar operation here and I'm <laughs> spending sure. I'm spending too much money as it is so yeah. feed wise that's what I do I'd... yeah and take everything that we say with a grain of salt we're going to do what we need to for our area uh, that's right. uh, the suggestion that we'll throw out to y'all you've got to feed according to your herd if you've got a lot of deer you need to feed more right. um, or like you if you got turkey come in thief and a lot of the corn uh, they're normally hitting a lot earlier than the deer sometimes or Right. Uh, in the evening, you know, they can come, it just depends when they come in. So definitely a feed according to your herd. Right. Uh, for me, I don't throw as much as Jeremy because I just don't have the population there. Um, and for me, I guess the biggest key is not so much what you throw, is, is that you keep it on a routine. Uh, keep in mind that time's fixing to change, so you'll definitely want to adjust your, your cameras here pretty quick. And don't feed too early in the morning and don't feed too late in the afternoon. You want to feed I would say in the morning, probably no more than 10 minutes before shootable light. Because if you feed too early, they're going to come in, eat, and be gone by the time you can get a shot off. Uh, I like throwing the second time because you may pick up some strays that weren't in ear's reach uh, on the first throw. Yep. Uh, especially when we get into the rutting season when deer are, are mobile. Um, you may get some does that are getting bumped and getting pushed by bucks and then they'll hear that and it may be not a feeder that they're accustomed to coming to but they're hungry so it'll help pull them in right. and pull that buck in with them um, same thing in the afternoon uh, don't don't throw too late because by the time they do come in yeah this is kind of situation we had this weekend the little hunt that we tried to sneak in we just set up a little quick ambush no feeder no anything and light got us they came in but it was too late by the right. time right by the you know, time they got into shooting range. Yeah, yeah, didn't have a, didn't so, have a shot. So, yes, sir. That's it for me. Yeah, uh, I say let's go into uh, our second question. My my personal favorite question. I know it's yours too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I got a little jab from David Grant uh, this week. Um, he's kind of picking on the producer of the show here, which is, which would be me. I'm the one that does all this, this all the computer stuff. So. His question was, do you think the music you play during the hunt affects the activity at the feeder? Does it affect the activity of the deer? So, David, we did a special test this week just for you, and we're going to roll the clip, and we'll let you determine what the results of the test were. Y'all need to calm down after that one. <laughs> uh, did, did we mention, you know, 18-year-old and up in this video? Yeah. <laughs> I know we said viewer's choice, but I think we had the editor's choice on that one. Right. That was, that was fun. The, the only thing I can say, Kelly, is bounce. Go on. <laughs> Barnyard. Yeah. All right. So, into our third question, uh, on a serious note, this one came from Chris Pierce. He said, what are some of the easiest ways to age deer in the field? This would be a great tool for most hunters trying to manage their deer herd. I'll go just uh, real quick and then we'll let Jeremy kind of finish up. He'll, he'll go more detailed, more elaborate. Um, for me personally, I typically look at three things here in West Texas. You got to remember we're not in Kansas, we're not in Iowa, we're not in 300 pound deer states. We're in little deer country. Yeah, yeah we're in a <laughs> little deer country. So for me personally, the three things I look at is going to be uh, the face structure. 
I want to look for a shorter snout, a bigger head. Um, I'm going to look in the brisket area. Uh, an older deer, Jeremy will talk more about this in a minute, but the brisket's going to stick out. You're going to see a chest development on a deer, um, especially on a broadside view. You'll see it stick out more from the shoulder and, and the way it comes into the neck. And then I'm going to look at the belly. Um, you know, I want to look for that roundish type of pot belly. Yep. And I guess let me add number four, and then I'll be quiet. Um, I also look at the glands. Uh, for me, the glands is a, is a real, real easy one to tell. Uh, the younger deer is going to be smooth. Uh, the color on the inside of the leg is going to be pretty fluent. It's going to match fairly well. Um, as they get older in life, they will actually develop a hair patch that will uh, that'll circle that gland, and it gets it gets uh, hairy. I don't know how else to say it. It gets fluffy, yeah. um, and it just has a total different look to it. It's not smooth. It's 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 a patch of fur there all the way around it. So, in the quick version, that's that's what I look for. All right, so going into a little more detail while Kelly fixes our camera over here. <laughs> uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, you've got fawns. Fawns are this year's offspring. They're they're small. They're the very little, like like the size of a a medium sized dog. You know, just you ought to be able to tell a fawn. They're usually nubbin bucks. If they broke the skin, they're just barely broke the skin in most cases. Uh, does are the same way. They're just really, really short. Uh, they're a lot shorter than a, a full-grown doe. Uh, you go into a yearling, which is a year and a half old deer. Usually, though, the bucks will will have four, maybe five-inch spikes. They'll start forking, maybe into a four-point, maybe even a six-point or eight-point. Uh, just depends on genetics and and food, water, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, a yearling's about the size of a medium-sized doe, uh, real, real skinny, skinny neck, skinny, skinny body. So the 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 legs are going to look really, really long. Uh, they're just they're they're kind of like you know uh, maybe like a, a, a great dane or something you know real long legged, uh, a greyhound. I mean, uh, anyways, and then you go into a two and a half year old deer, two and a half year old deer. The neck is starting to get a little bit thicker, but they're real lanky as well. The body's a little bit deeper, so their legs look a little bit more, more proportionate to the body. Uh, the butt is still real rounded. It's not boxed off yet. Uh, they're just a little thicker deer. Uh, at two and a half, the antler growth will, will actually be a lot bigger, a lot better. You might have, might have them out to the ears, you know, uh, when they're alert. Uh, now, on, on that, you really can't age a deer based off of antler growth. You need to do it off of body. Uh, so, hurrying it through here, going into a three and a half year old deer, the neck is starting to get really thick. Uh, it, it doesn't quite match into the brisket. Uh, the brisket is still protruding out more now, and it's a little bit darker. Uh, the neck still has a, a distinct difference in between the neck and brisket. Mm -hmm. uh, the head looks a little bit shorter and fatter. The, ne the snout is a little bit boxed off more uh, just because of the size of the neck. Uh, the belly, you're starting to see where the belly is going up now into the hind quarters on a three and a half year old deer. Uh, but they're really, they're really muscular at this, this age. <laughs> They're, they're real muscular. You can see all the muscles real nice, kind of like a, a racehorse. Uh, now you step it up into a four and a half year old deer. Now a four and a half year old deer, the telltale sign to me on a four and a half year old deer is the neck to brisket. Mm -hmm. the, the neck will almost, almost transition into the brisket. You don't hardly see a brisket uh, because the neck is so fat. Uh, the head is real, real square, real boxy. Uh, a lot of people will look from, from antler to bottom of the jaw is usually the same as eye to the snout uh, because their head just gets bigger. Uh, the, the rear end is real square. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times the back will slope in a little bit and the belly is more of a sag. Uh, their coat is, is a little bit more, uh, like you say, dull. Mm -hmm. And dull out gray out. Right. And, the, and their skin starting to get a little bit saggier. 
and then you go into a five and a half year old deer. A five and a half year old deer is starting to starting to go into an old man. Uh, his skin is really saggy. Uh, his coat, you know, getting a little bit darker. And they say a, a three and a half year old deer has 80% growth, antler and body. A uh, four and a half year old deer is usually the prime. A uh, five and a half year old deer, I believe, is still in the prime. And anything after five and a half year old deer, uh, they're starting to go downhill. And you can really see it in the, in the, the way the body starts to, starts to sag. The, none of the muscles are real, you know, mm -hmm. d distinct. And, you know, the, the antler growth is going downhill now. Uh, in, in my area, I would love to stick with a four and a half year old and up for a shooter, a shooter buck and, and doe at that. But definitely for the bucks, uh, it's hard to find them. A three and a half year old is, is like top, you know, what we can get. Yeah. But I, I hope that helps. Uh, I didn't want to go into too much detail. Yeah. Uh, another, another thing I can say real quick is look at the musk glands. The, the glands on a two and a half year old deer are barely getting a little bit of color. Uh, three and a half year old, they're getting, they're getting thicker, they're getting darker. And then a four and a half year old deer, they're just really thick and year round they're, they're, they're dark. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not talking about rut yet, before rut. Yeah. So. The only true way to age a deer is to basically harvest the deer and then examine the teeth on the inside. Uh, right. You, you can see the wear pattern on them. That'll give you the exact age. Yeah, it'll give you the exact right. age. But you, um, <laughs> you, do, you do need to field age a deer because yeah. you don't want to shoot a two and a half year old deer. No. I mean, you, they're, they're kids. They yeah. need to grow and develop. Yeah. So. And I would say a key thing for that as well is spending time in the stand. Yeah. Um, an inexperienced hunter is going to have trouble. Just one factor is because there's so much excitement in there but the longer you're in the stand the more that you hunt the more you're around deer the more you can pretty quickly you know de yeah. decipher within yeah. a year plus or minus most of the time yeah. of, of once you get the deer four and a half and older it's starting to get hard mm -hmm. it is yeah so and if you get a lot of deer like not bragging my place i've got a big quantity of deer so i see you know your fawns all the way up to three and a half, maybe four and a half year old deer. So it, you can you can look at them all at the yeah. same time. So yeah. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Uh, you want to check see if there's any more questions on there real quick? Yeah, I can. I think that was just about all of our questions. While Jeremy's checking, make sure we didn't miss something. Just want to mention uh, this week, Jeremy will be doing a solo hunt back down at his place. I'm actually going to be taking two weeks off. Uh, I need to give my place a break just a little bit. Just the deer are just really not around right now, so I don't want to be wasting a whole lot of time down there. Uh, and I'm hoping for a bit cooler weather and for the deer to shift a little bit where I'm at. Plus, I'm having a technical trouble. We had a camera break this weekend, yeah. so I'm um, down one camera. I had to send it in to get it repaired. So that's part of filming. That's just the way it goes. Yes, so, sir. You want to touch on your hunt coming up for this weekend? Uh, yeah, real quick. I've got uh, my, my loving wife allowed me to take my last day of vacation to go hunt. Uh, it's the last weekend of archery before the rifle guys come in. Uh, I'm, taking, I'm taking off Thursday and my days off are Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'll get a four day weekend. It's just gonna be me for the first couple of days. Uh, my wife and daughter and son are gonna come up Friday evening. Uh, and then. Saturday, Sunday, me and my son, Gavin, will go hunt. My wife and daughter, Chandra and Peyton, they'll hang out in the camper and read their books and relax. Take a weekend off. Good family time. Yep. So hopefully hopefully this weekend something's going down. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do my best to get Gavin on a doe. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'll take a turkey if I can't find anything else. Uh, Lucky or something bigger comes in, it, yeah. it's going to hit the ground. Yeah, it needs to. We're itching, itching bad. I'm I'm ready to get some venison in the freezer. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, we're wanting to do an episode on on uh, processing, I believe. So mm -hmm. I think that'd be something cool to do next week. Yeah. So if you guys have any ideas for any future episodes or any other educational things that you would like our our input on, we're by no means the the dear gods. I mean, we nope. just we just tell you what we know and what's worked for us. So take it with a grain of salt. 
But if you have any extra comments, post them under this clip here, and we will add those in in the future. Like Jeremy said, uh, there was a gentleman wanting to know about processing, so we'll kind of go into that and maybe go into uh, not just processing, but we'll go from processing to the kitchen table. Just do the whole thing, do yes. a little cooking show and stuff like that too. So. Yep. Anyway, we hope y'all's October is going better than ours. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we just uh, we just hope everybody has a good hunt season. Uh, just please be safe this weekend. And if you can hit the woods, man. Yep. Go hit them. Be, be sure y'all post all all your trophy mm -hmm. trophy photos on our page. Uh, we will more than gladly share them. Uh, congratulate you. Uh, we we want y'all to get more involved. Tell us what. Give us some ideas what you want to want to see from us. We'll we'll consider it. Uh, just get more involved. Like, comment, share. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So, all right. Well, that's gonna do it for episode four of Elite Hunter. We'll check in with you later. Be elite.